This is the gamification of the geometry unit using Classcraft. This is for the ages of 12 and 13 in the middle school setting, and it's for a 7th grade Common Core math class. By this time of the year, many of the students are bored of the routines and the daily expectations at school. So there needs to be a change up. By offering students an opportunity to play games in the class with the materials that's being taught is ultimately reaching what their needs are. The resources from this week was invaluable for me to determine what resource I'm going to use to gamify my content. Classcraft is an engagement management system that can be used to motivate students to behave and to accomplish various tasks through the quests that are provided by the system. Students are able to engage with one another with teams and different quests that they can self-pace themselves through. Students will be able to create characters that represent them in this fictitious world, while teachers can combine and connect and motivate students. This tool is originally used to motivate behaviors for the students, but I found that it could be combined with curricular activities. I went ahead and enrolled my students in this class. One of the first things that need to occur is for students to create their characters. They can choose from warriors, mages, and healers, and they can also choose what kind of equipment goes with their character. Students will have the ability to track their health points, experience points, and action or ability points. In part 5 and 6 of the module presentation, the ability for students to keep track of their ongoing progress, medals, badges, and accomplishment is a crucial component of gamification. Students will also be able to accrue gold points, known as GP, which allows them to buy new skins and equipment. But we will walk through that later on in the video. You can see at the bottom of the picture, students are placed into teams which allow them to interact with one another and share their abilities. For example, a warrior can be healed by the healer of the group as they get damage from the gameplay. Let's take a look at the equipment that you can gain from playing the game. In this particular character, um, it is a mage, and you can tell that this is very different from the initial design. For example, when you first start out, the mage has the initial appearance that looks like this. You can choose between female and male, but this particular image with the brown and then the black and the gray tone is all that's offered. Later on, you can obtain gold points, which allows you to buy purchase things that allow the costume to change. Let's go ahead and go to the equipment section. For example, let's say we want to buy a different colored belt. We can go ahead and you can tell that the belt changed from blue to a, a green color or the hood which is probably a little bit more apparent we can change it to green if we choose to buy it this one costs 54 gold points it would be then in the database and we can save the changes we have purchased a new look now let's dive into the world of classcraft when students select the quest feature it will bring them to a map this map shows the various quests that are available to them. The most recent quest that I designed for this course was the Space Stone. Once you click on that, it will take them into another map which outlines their journey. Students will all begin in the introduction. The window, it says this, Before the time of superheroes, the five infinity stones remained hidden in the world. The Space Stone remained hidden through the various geometric concepts in GeoCity. The ones peaceful and innovative city is now filled with corruption bandits and villains are now bandits and villains are out to claim the stone for their own evil purposes be the first to find the space stone you and your team of heroes need to claim the stone and protect it with the reveal of the avengers endgame the infinity stones was a popular concept and i thought that it would motivate students to play for a reward that they have heard through pop culture start button it takes you to your next quest or task the task is to visit the tribal village which deals with surface areas of right prisms when you click on this the story continues the journey continues with another storyline students can read on to see how the story unfolds within this quest the teacher has also provided the learning objectives on the bottom of the prompt 
If you click on continue, it will then tell you what the tasks are. These tasks are given to the students to complete. The great thing about this is that the students can self-pace themselves when they go through the various tasks, or the teachers can go ahead and regulate that as well. Students have the opportunity to allow themselves to comment on their assignments, provide feedback, and use the Google Suite. Students can also earn 500 experience points and 100 gold points to buy future equipment. In addition to this feature, we also have the discussion board, where we encourage students to bounce ideas off of one another, to explore the deeper meanings of the concept, and to share their learnings. Once I have completed the task, you can see that I received my rewards, and right now my character went up to level 5. I can view my gear, and I can choose various items to upgrade. For example, now I want to change my pants so now I change it and I can purchase it and now my character has a different look many of the students gravitated towards this feature and they were very motivated to learn and go through other tasks in order that they can purchase other skins and different equipment let's go back into the quests when we're back in the quest it will take us to the next one we finished tribal village so if i'm going to maximum capacity once again the story continues with the geoland storing food in the various buildings which then ties into the concept of volume and just like how silos hold different grains and wheats these are the tasks that they will have to content continue with and since it is student regulated we can go ahead and allow the students to click through once they finish those items i can hit right done upload any documents or any attachments sometimes I can ask the students have screenshots once again I will get 500 experience points allowed along with 100 gold points I hit submit and I have received the level 6 award I can view my gear and once again I can change my complete outfit it doesn't look like I have enough gold points, so I have to hold off on buying that particular item, which allows the students to have more motivation to do that. So going back through the world, you can tell that the program doesn't show them the next task, so they have to go through Egyptian Origins, which has these various items that was outlined by my mapping diagram. And once again, I can complete my item and submit and there we go the ultimate goal is to get to the end of the quest which at, is at the throne of stones and once that's completed it will be followed with a summative to end the class that is online so one of the cool new features that this game has is the ability to use different class tools we have a random picker which is a fun way to kind of select students randomly you can go ahead and select teams and players randomly and this could be in regards to whatever activity class discussions I could say hey who learned something new and this is the next person that's going to share what they have I can reset and next person is Isaac Lowe or we have other tools random events these are the various things that kids have to be able to uh, complete this is the game portion of it and uh, my favorite feature is this boss battle. This boss battle, it can be set for the teacher at any time where the students have to have their warriors engage with the enemy. This particular enemy, I called him uh, the Stone Rascal, has a power of, I believe it was 70. Students can be selected at random and they can start the battle. For example, the students will have the ability to play against them and there are questions that are ha they have to use. If the student is able to answer the question correctly, it could deal a negative 10 damage to the already 70 life that's right there. This particular question has find the, is talking about finding the value of the rectangular, pris rectangular prism and a picture is provided if they click on that or they can go back to the um, site and when they answer it the answer is revealed and they can right click on correct answer if it's correct it dealt damage there let's take a look at the next question the next question is how many square inches is in the prison that is 11 by 6 by 3 inches you can click on the image that will show you the, the example of the problem 
And if we click off of that, let's say we reveal the answer and it is wrong, then the boss deals 10 damage to, that, to our particular person. Now this is the part that's kind of neat where the team has the ability to heal their person or protect their person or they can just be dealt the 10 damage that is there. Students will engage in this battle until they have defeated the enemy. You can see that 10 damage was done to the frightened Wazzler and now it's down to 60 but eventually when they get to zero they have defeated the boss. There are many other features that are in the premium feature of Classcraft, and that's one of the things that I wish I had, but it does not, it requires the teachers to pay for this. As I'm trying this tool out and gamifying the class, this is something that I would consider for next year. So what are some of the limitations? Once again, I just mentioned that in order to have more features such as the premiums and to go beyond this six, you can tell that this warning right here says only six quests or six or fewer objectives can be used on free free accounts. Then they would ask you to upgrade. We have a ninety six dollars, which uh, which is thirty three percent off, um, in for a yearly or a twelve dollars per month feature that's asked. However, since this is the first time around, I did not have that. Another limitation is that I did not successfully have the students try it this year. I wanted to try this knowing that this was my ultimate goal of gamifying my class and my unit. However, it requires parent permission due to the COPA law since so many of my students are 12 and 13, and that wasn't established early on in the year. But if this class has allowed me to explore this option, I might consider using this next year and asking for permission earlier on. I definitely want to consider using this resource next year. Um, it has various things that I think could be motivating for kids. It's very powerful. It allows me to see uh, group students however I want and you can tell I can monitor their progress and allow them to build a little bit of cohesiveness and collabor collaboration between the groups without an academic pressure. I'm able to view the class pro pro progress and apply anything that happens during the classroom in regards to behavior as well because behavior oftentimes isn't included in the grade. But overall, I'm pretty excited about what I've learned. Another limitation is when you first start doing this, it is very, there is a learning curve, knowing how to implement different things into tasks and quests. That did take me a couple hours to figure out. However, I am, it was well worth it. Uh, and the final thing that um, was fantastic was the ability for Google Classroom or the SI, little SIS to link up with this particular website. It works seamlessly with the Google and imported a lot of my student names and whatnot. And I was able to even get my son into this account uh, using his own Gmail account to kind of fool around and to see what the features are. But overall, Classcraft is a great way to gamify your classroom.